Hi everyone, so welcome back to the Loop of Coding. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to change your language inside your React application. So this is what the demo look like. So as you can see right here, I have the word hello right here. So I'm going to choose the language and I'm going to change this one. So since this is in English, I'm going to change it to JP, which is Japan. So I'm going to click here. So as you can see right now, it's changed to Japan and I can toggle back to with English. So I think uh, that pretty much it for this demo. So let's get started. All right, so here I'm using VS Code, so you can use any ticket that you want. And this is just a boilerplate from Create React App. And at the moment, it just display hello right here. To enable the translations in our apps, we're going to use uh, the library. I leave the link in the description. It is called React's i18 Next this one. So please go ahead and uh, install this one. So I have added this one into our projects already. And if you haven't, please go ahead and do that. So after we doing this one, we are going to create the file. So I'm going to create one file and inside here, we're going to initial uh, this one. So first I'm going to import this one. So as you can see it, uh, when I type this one, it's auto import for me. So first we're going to use uh, this one is, is not from React, so but we use it uh, for the React. So as you can see, we install this one as well. So we're going to use uh, init reacts um, i18 next, this one, and then so that's pretty much it. So from this one, and then we can do initial, and then we can put the uh, resources inside this one. So first it's going to be resources, it's going to be the as an object for this one. And the another one is going to be the LNG, the keyword uh, for this one is this. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it empty. Uh, this one is going to define the language. So basically, it's a, a default language for, for us to use. And then, so next, I can just export and then default, and then I can export the this one. So that's pretty much it. So to use this one is really simple. You have to go to index.js, and then you import the file and save and that pretty much it so right now so we're gonna fill up the info inside the resource right here so the resource right here is gonna be the resource of the language translation so first is we gonna have like um this one inside this one is gonna be like a key so i'm gonna be like a shortcut for english is gonna be en or if you want to do like a jp you can do just jp the key right here you can uh, put any key you want so this is just a shortcut and inside here, we're going to have like uh, one key is going to be called translations. And the value of the translations is going to be like the an object. And you can put a keyword right here. So let's say if I want to do hello, and then I can just what is the translation of hello, it's going to be hello. So because it's English, it's nothing uh, different. The key and the value may be the same. But for a different language will be different, right? So let's say I go for JP, the hello will be different. So if I go to Google Translate, I can copy this one and I can paste it right here. Oops. All right, this one, make sure you make it right. Okay, so right now we pretty much set up, set up the resource. If you have more resource, uh, you can go ahead and fill out this one. And I will come back and update this one if in case we have a lot of things to be placed for the resources. And right now, let's go back to the LNG right here, which is the default language. So I'm going to put uh, EN. So make sure you match the key value right here. You can put JP uh, as well. But and first, I'm going to show you how it works. And then we can later, later on chain this one. Let's go back to apps.js and then we can use it this one. So to use it, it's really simple. You can just use translations. So this use translation right here is come from the uh, this package right here. From here, you can have two things. First is going to be the T value. And the next one is going to be I18, the I18 ends right here. This one, okay? So I can destructure this one. And for the T right here, we can use it to uh, interact with the translate. I mean, like the translation. So it's going to be interact with the value inside here the key of this one. So I can use the T and the keyword is going to be hello. So, okay. So make sure that this one, you use this uh, curly braces right now. It's still a show hello, which is okay. But because we use the language is e, uh, English. So that's why it's show the same. 
let's say if I change this one to JP and right now you can see the value is changing right so but we don't want to change this way to to enable to change the language that's why we can we have this one right here so to make it simple I can create two dong so I'm gonna do like uh, English and the another one is gonna be like um, JP okay so I'm um, the when when we unclick on this one it's gonna change the language to English so we can access the variable that we have right here oops and then we're gonna do change language and then you can pass the key of it so the en so this one it's mean that we match the value that we have in here make sure uh, if you done pass it like match the key that we have here it will not be changed and we can do the same as for this value and this one is going to be changed to jp okay so right now if i click on jp it changed to uh, japanese and i click on english it changed back to english and all right so i think that is pretty much it uh it, the next thing that you can do is to let's say right now um the default let's say if i click on japanese so i want when the user come back i want the language to set to japanese i don't want it to the user that japanese user will come back and then to click select again so to do that is really simple so first uh, i'm going to create a function called handle change uh change lng so which is it means like changing uh language for this one and then i can copy the function that we have in here i can erase this one and we just call this and then we can just pass the value right here so let's say lmg and then we can use it right over here okay i think we can just return this one and so whenever this one is being called so we can call this one and the value is going to be ian and the same thing for this one i'm going to update this one right here and i'm going to change this one to jp oops so right now uh so when we when the user click on this one we should also and there's no need to return as well so right now if i click on right here everything works fine and also what we need to do this one we need to add the local storage set items and then we can do l and g and this one and then the value can be like the value that we have in here okay so that pretty much it so um, and so then and we go back in here rather than read from the default right here we can read it from the local storage we can do the our operator local storage dot get items and our item is going to be the uh lmg because this value that we just set is right here okay so right now let's say i'm on english and then if i go to click on jp and if i refresh it's still uh jp uh, still in japanese unless i uh, click on English again and it's when I refresh it's there very nice okay so I think that pretty much it and how easy it is for you to actually change the language and so the next thing is we talk about is how so this one is is great but as you can see it's become it's going to get messy and because let's say you might have like a lot of things right when our apps it's getting bigger there might be a lot of text and you might jam into right here but there's a things that so you can actually create a JSON for it and then you can use it later so let's say you can create a, a folder right here I'm gonna call this one LNG full language and then you can do like a ENs dot JSONs and inside here you can put all the keywords that you have um, so let's say I'm going to cut this one right here oops i can just put it right here and same thing for uh, japanese which is jp and then we can can do the same thing but the value is going to be this one right okay so we have this one and then for the resource right here uh the translation what you can do you can just uh use the import we can import the value that we have so import ens from this one slash slash en.json and there's also another thing is going to be equal to the jp and you can from jp.json okay so then you can just use en here and then this one you can just use the uh, jp okay 
So right now you can't add uh, many keys as you want, so make sure, but the key is going to be exactly the same things. Uh, this one, so let's say I'm going to say, I don't know, how are you, or something like that, and then in English it's going to be exactly the same thing, right? Oops. And then for Japanese, I'm going to copy this one, and then I can paste this one, and then I can copy and go back, and... There you go, so this is the value. And so this will be the key. Okay, so that's uh that's it. So when we go back into our apps, we use this one as really simple. We can do another each one. And then we can just do T and then we put our key. How are you? So and right now if I click on JP and then it's translate this one. So it's, as you can see, it's bigger because I zoom in. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it uh, for this video. And you can read more on the documentation. I will leave the link in the description. Hope you learned something from this one. And if you have any things, you can ask me in the comments. Thank you for watching.